Hi, this is Hunter. I'm an applications engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. And today we're going to tame that B spline. So we're going to look at the spline tool in the SolidWorks Sketcher and how you can control it so that with a little bit of practice it can become your best friend. So the spline tool is a little bit daunting to control if you're not used to how it works. So we're going to break down a spline into its simplest parts and we're going to slowly add a little bit of complexity until we get to the shape we're looking for. So the easiest way to control a spline is through its spline points and those are the points that the spline has to pass through as it traverses from the start to the end. And notice just moving that point has a very drastic effect on the shape. Now another way we can affect the shape of the spline is with the tangent handle. And basically this is just a vector that prescribes the direction in which the spline has to go through its intermediate points and the magnitude of that vector affects sort of how drastic of an effect that particular direction has on the overall length of the spline. So obviously making a direction longer will balloon the spline out more while making it smaller uh, gives that particular direction much less of an effect. So let's look at a sketch, uh, or another sketch, that is performed simply with splines. It's on the back of this board. I've traced a sketch picture in order to get uh, this flame shape. So if we look at that sketch, uh, it's just a bunch of splines going around a sketch picture. And if you're not familiar with sketch pictures, you can find them under Tools, Sketch Tools, and Sketch Picture. And what that allows you to do is take uh, an image file and paste it into your sketch so that you can use it as an outline or to trace or for reference or whatever you might want to do with that picture. So let's look at the most simple form of a spline and that's just a line. So just two points and nothing fancy going on between them. If I click on that spline and I move one of the tangent handles Notice that tangent handle becomes active and it stays in blue, whereas the other handle is in gray because it has no information assigned to it yet. Uh, in general, we want to use as few control handles as possible. So if I accidentally add a handle I didn't mean to, I can click on it and uncheck the little tangent driving box. And that deactivates that handle and resets it to the default. If I right click on the spline, I can say insert spline point. And spline points, again, are something we're going to want to use the fewest amount possible. But uh, the spline points, like I said, they have a very drastic effect on the shape. And something most users don't realize is a spline has two modes. It has a relaxed mode. And for lack of a better term, it has an uptight mode. And uh, an uptight spline is a lot like an uptight person. You can't really make a drastic change to it without it freaking out on you. So if you're going to make a drastic change to a spline, you're going to want to relax it. And what exactly does that mean, relaxed spline versus uptight spline? Well, if we look at this spline, uh, this point is roughly halfway along the distance as we go from point A to point B. And if I drag that point down closer to the start, we'll see that it maintains about halfway along the length of that spline. Now if I relax the spline and then I move that point, notice that the point can now slide along that path as if it was maybe a, a, a ring attached to a piece of rope. It slides along that piece of rope. So we're not fixing the length of spline between the point and the end point. Now a spline that is not relaxed, and just by simply manipulating one of the drag handles, the spline is no longer relaxed. So if the spline is not relaxed, notice we're going to get the same amount of material roughly between this point and this point, even if I move that point closer to the beginning. Now sometimes this is ideal, sometimes it isn't. And let's take a look at uh, when that might be and when it won't. So let's delete a couple of these splines and add them again. So get my spline tool out and we're going to want to have a spline at each endpoint and then usually at the bottom of each valley and the top of each hill. So I'm just going to look for the crests and the valleys here and put a spline point in each of those locations. And notice the spline comes in relaxed. 
So this is the time that I might want to make any drastic changes to the locations of these points. If I put a point in completely the wrong location, I'm going to want to manipulate that location while the spline is relaxed. So even if I had sketched the spline like this, I can still drag those points back to their location they're supposed to be without making the entire shape go completely crazy. Now once I get the spline points roughly where I want them, I like to add control to just the tangent handles on the very ends first, and usually that does all that I need it to do. So let's change the handle at the end, and change the handle at the start, and we've already gotten pretty darn close to the shape we're looking for. Now we just have a little bit of a, uh, a mismatch right here in this region. So since the spline is uh, not relaxed, notice that we're going to keep about the same amount of material between the points and just by massaging these points into the right location I can actually get exactly what I'm looking for. And so we have it. Now let's look at a more complicated situation. Let me put a spline point here, bottom of the valley, top of the hill, bottom of the valley, top of the hill, bottom of the valley, top of the hill, bottom of the valley, and then we'll finish. Now in this case, just manipulating the handles, let's get the spline started off right, and make sure it finishes right. And let's move this spline point like so. Notice that we're not going to quite get the shape that we're looking for. And really, no matter what I do at this point, we're not going to get the proper result. So this is a case where I might need to add some points. And actually, it's a good rule of thumb that if you're rounding a corner like this, you're going to want to have a spline point at um, sort of where the curve starts, ends, and somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to add two spline points here. So let's right click, insert spline points. Let's put one right here and one right here. And we'll drag them over to where they're supposed to be. And notice that moving this point is affecting the entire length of the spline in a way that, uh, that I might not actually want. And I don't desire this change. So that's a reason that making drastic changes to the locations of spline points is not a good idea when the spline is not relaxed. So I'll click on the spline, I'm going to say relax spline, and now we'll see that we'll get a lot better behavior when we're making big changes to the locations of these spline points. And just like that, we've gotten pretty close to the result that I'm looking for. So in order to tweak it into the final shape, I might want to first let's unrelax the spline. And the best way to do that is just to massage one of the handles a little bit. And then we'll try making minor edits to the locations of the spline points. And usually when the spline is not relaxed, making minor edits is quite okay. And we'll find that pretty quickly, once again, we'll get to the result that I'm looking for. And once again, I've only modified the handle at the beginning and the end. Now in some cases, this might not work. You might have to add control to some of the intermediate handles. For example, if I wanted to balloon out this shape in the bottom here, I might just tweak this head handle and this one ever so slightly and that gives me a more rounded shape. But again, these are just making minor edits, not drastically changing the shape of the spline. So just to conclude, a few of the best practices, we're going to put spline points on the beginning and the end, and those are going to be the only points that we're definitely going to add changes to the tangent handles. After that, we're going to try and manipulate the spline using the spline points. And if we're going to make drastic changes to the locations of the spline points, we will relax the spline. And if we're just making minor tweaks to the shape, it's okay for the spline to be uptight. And then the finishing touches I'll add using control of the tangent driving handles. So thank you for watching, and I hope you look forward to much more great content like this on our Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel.